with Gabe and Steven. We are, in fact, Gabe and Steven, and we're welcoming you to it. Why are we both wearing sunglasses, Gabe? Because Why? we are drinking BB Co. today, Burlington Beer Company, and we BB got these Co. dope BB Co. sunglasses that we picked up from the uh, Vermont Beer Festival that we went to two years ago, a year and a half ago, long time, Three, two four long years ago. ago. Yeah. yeah, it was a little too long ago. But uh, yeah, we're drinking BB Co. We've had this brewery on the books for a very long time because they have very intricate and different beers and we are very excited to chug them. So here we are. Round 81, our 81st episode. Welcome back. Yeah, BB Co. out of Vermont, Burlington Beer Company. Uh, packed show today, some news, a uh, bit of a funeral. We'll get into that later. Aww. Some fun can arts and crafts, some two different beers to drink, a whole lot to do. Super pumped about it. So thank you for joining us. Um, we're here. Thank you, you so feeling, much. Gabe? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling ready and eager, and we're recording a little bit earlier, but hey, it's five o'clock somewhere. Am I right? It's, <laughs> it's actually five o'clock. So anyway, it's fine. It's good to go. We are The Hop. We are on Instagram and Twitter at The HO Podcast. If you want to connect with us on social media, you can find us on YouTube as a video podcast. See our smiling faces and these dope sunglasses that we are wearing. Um, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, Google. You can write a review if you want to do that. We would appreciate it. We love it when people write reviews. Are you going to wear the sunglasses the whole show? No, not the whole show. Just for the little <laughs> first little bit. I'm just I'm okay. feeling feeling very good. So here we are. Love it. Uh, thopod at gmail.com. That's the email if you want to shoot us a message. One of these. You ready to do some news, Gabe? I am always ready to do some news, Stephen. Beer news. So, other half is opening a tap room in Philly, Yo, they which are is kind of dope. <laughs> they, they, they are right? expanding everywhere. <laughs> Because they just got, they made the uh, Domino Park place, right? Yeah. Wasn't that them? And I, now, it's, it's them. They, they're they in Brooklyn. They're in Philly. They're in Antarctica. They're just they're, killing <laughs> it right now. It's insane. It's kind of a middle ground between their New York City and they do have a space in D.C. So it's like a nice, uh, so good for them. They're taking over a former Goose Island tap room. Um, meanwhile, speaking of new spaces, Trillium, listen, Trillium is, their Canton, Massachusetts space is coming and... I mean, you guys can't see the pictures of it that we that Gabe and I are looking at, but holy shit, is this mm. a uh, this is a sexy building? It's got it a wood looks fired great. I mean, it's beautiful. It's this giant sprawling like what is it? Uh, it five hundred plus seat tap room. It looks uh, like a giant warehouse that they just converted into a brewery. They've got couches lined up. They've got the bar stools and tables. I mean, you could grab not a friend, friends, and have like you know your party of the year there. I mean, barrels on the walls. I mean, what's better than that? Twenty acre facility, uh, obviously super you know sustainable and everything, um, and just but beautiful. And the food looks amazing. The wood fired uh, pizza. pizza. They got wood stacked. Oh my god! It's I can't tell well, if there are solar panels on the roof. I think that there are. It, I yeah, be... it kind of looks like there are. Look at yeah, them it, being all smart. <laughs> it's 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 a super. It's beautiful. Yeah, you uh, gotta you gotta get there and check it out. We gotta get there and check it out. Oof. Off to Boston. Hell yeah. Our first story, uh, we do have an update on modern times, a bit of an update here. So you'll remember we reported, what is it, two months ago now? A little more than that, maybe Something even. Like that, um, yeah. But the company's founder and CEO, Jacob McKean, stepped down after multiple allegations of harassment, misconduct, basically creating a hostile, unsafe, and inappropriate work environment. This was part of the sort of movement that was sparked by Brienne Allen at Rack Magnet over on Twitter, um, you know, that kind of Instagram. started the, uh, on Instagram, yeah, excuse me, uh, it's kind of started the uh, beer revolution, if you will, the sort of, so anyway, Modern Times is moving forward, they've begun a search for a new CEO, and they've also announced seven areas of change that they're addressing in the coming weeks and months, so it's a very extensive update that they put out uh, in a blog on their website, 
And updates, you know, the things that they're addressing include anti-racism training. They are doing a pay equity audit. Uh, they're having an outside firm come in to do that. They're implementing a code of conduct that they're writing for both staff and guests. They're improving their investigative processes and, um, you know, reporting processes for harassment and things of this nature in their work environment. And they're uh, implementing additional reference requirements for prospective employees, which they didn't really have before. They've also partnered with a number of outside uh, parties, but one of them is engaged to change. Um, and they're working with them to create a diversity, equity, and inclusion group within the company's leadership. So it's steps in the right direction. It's definitely um, first steps in the right direction. And uh, the CEO search is going to take a while and the change is going to take even longer than that. In a statement on their website, the company wrote, quote, by holding ourselves accountable, listening to our people, upholding transparency, and continually committing to a creating a safe, equitable work environment, we are doing our utmost to ensure that Modern Times stays on the right track. I would rephrase that to Modern Times gets on the right track. Yeah. But yeah. whatever. But the point is right. they're moving they're moving in the right direction. It's positive. And, you know, like we said when we first broke this story and other stories around Boulevard Brewing and and other breweries of that nature, clean it up, clean, clean it, it up. up, and you know hopefully the new CEO can right the ship, if you will. Yeah. Um. But snowballing right off of that. Speaking of Brienne Allen, who is changing the beer world for the better. Thank you for that. Uh, she is has the reins on a new beer collaboration called Brave Noise. Uh, this is a global beer collaboration to quote advocate for safe spaces and inclusive environments by requesting breweries be transparent with their policies and commit to long-term work. Now, this is really dope because not only is it another, you know, all breweries can come together collaboration sort of thing, but going off of what you just said, it's a perfect example for changing for the better and for these types of things. Uh, the beer is a pale ale. Breweries can participate by going to bravenoisebeer.com. And this is my favorite part. In order to participate, the brewery will need to submit their code of conduct, publicly post their code of conduct and resources available for staff and customers via their website, QR code and or signage at their physical location, commit to the long-term work, and donate 100% of the proceeds to a verified nonprofit organization. Now, breweries can submit the information through the website, get verified, approved, and receive confirmation email with the recipe and promotional materials. This is a step in the right direction. It's an advocacy for changing the beer game for better, and it's uh, going to create another beer for proceeds to go to charitable or good organizations. And so... We could all use some of that. So this is a great, great thing that things are doing. Uh, beer drinkers and home brewers can visit the website as well for more information about how they can get involved. Huge shout out to Brienne for keeping this moving go movement going. We support you. We hear you. We are here for you. Thank you so much. At Rat Magnet on Instagram. Yeah, on Instagram. And it's, it's Got yeah, it. like like you said, shout out. I mean, it's great to see her taking this this sort of overwhelming movement and not letting it sort of stay there but turning it into actionable real you know change and some of the suggested not nonprofits it, not letting it stay on instagram which is great as, mm -hmm. as great as it started there no it's branching out and that's what we want some of the suggested nonprofits that they recommend to partner with include the safe bar network the hollaback rain r-a-i-n-n -N, infinite ingredient dandelion initiative the drinks trust and so many more so you know, this is uh, this is dope. And Black is Beautiful really showed us the power of these kinds of collaboration beers and what they can do. So, of course, uh, if I see the Brave Noise anywhere in a beer store anytime soon, you can bet I'll be purchasing it. Grab, grab, grab. We will, we will right. do whatever we can. I'm sure some beer stores around us have it or will get it. So we'll see. All right. One thing we have to do before we leave the news section is... Uh, we have to take off our caps in mourning, and we're gathered here to do mourn have, the loss of do a seltzer. I actually have to take my hat off? No, you no. don't have to take <laughs> Listen, just a month after launching their orange cream pop flavor, Molson Coors has 
decided to throw in the towel and lay their core seltzer to rest. And I can't speak of all the good times we had together. It would take too long. What it? But we wanted to give it just a eulogy, a little moment of silence. Pour one out, if you will. Um, yeah, the move is a bit surprising, and it comes after the brand. Okay, hold on. Well, I gotta shut this. <laughs> He's over here, like, all right, let's get into the information about it. Meanwhile, in the background, it's like someone died. <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, the, the brand basically said they analyzed industry figures indicating that hard seltzer extensions of traditional beer brands, so that would be, you know, Bud Light Seltzer, the Coors Seltzer, the Corona Seltzer, those things are not selling as well. They're faring par- poorly in comparison to standalone labels like White Claw and Truly, so um, they, uh, they laid it to rest, as it were. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know... It's too bad for some people. Not it's hard really to work up feelings about it. Um, yeah. It's, it's you know. going to remain available in Canada. So great. Grab a Tim Hortons coffee and <laughs> a Coors <laughs> Seltzer. A. And a hockey game and <laughs> you're chilling. It's great. And it doesn't take Molson Coors out of the seltzer space completely because they still own right. Vizzy and Topo Chico. So they're just laying to rest this particular label. Um, but it is kind of funny because like like literally I think two weeks ago they announced that they were partnering partnering with an ice cream brand and yeah. doing like drunks drunk ice cream and they just came out with this new flavor and now they're like, nah, forget it. Yeah, they came out, so, they said we're gonna partner with these guys, it's gonna be a new thing, and then they said Another one buys the dust. Bye. Done. Sorry Bye. guys. Bye. <laughs> Better luck next year. All right, Gabe. We have Plenty of fascinating beers to drink. Why don't you lead the way? Why don't I? Hit me with that music. There it is. Let's get into it with a fun little toast. Observe, when Mother Earth is dry, she drinks the droppings of the sky, and then the dewy cordial gives to every thirsty plant that lives. The vapors which at evening sweep are beverage to the swelling deep. And when the rosy sun appears, he drinks the misty ocean's tears. The moon, too, quaffs her palmy stream of luster from the solar beam. Then hence with all your sober thinking, since nature's holy law is drinking, mind's the law of nature here, and pledge the universe in beer. Amen. Let's drink. BB Co. Welcome to the show. Really nice. Nice. That it has very... nothing to do with Vermont or the beers. It just spoke to me. I was and gonna here say it are. kind of felt like it did though, because it was kind of like agricultural, kind of like it just yeah, to me so. the language I was picking up. It felt appropriate. I, I see what you did I'm, there. I'm glad I reached someone with that. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short. Damn straight. Let's grab a drink. Yeah, 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 BB Co. Listen, BB Co. Burlington Beer Company out of Burlington, Vermont, is one Dope. of the goats in one of the greatest beer cities in America. Pretty so, much. Um, this if is an exciting one. We've if had you're not in Vermont, for a while. step it up, step up your game, and get on this level. And we're gonna kick things off with the pedal prophecy. I feel oh. like before I even mention anything about it just if you're on youtube take a look at the can art and just recognize all of their cans look like this it is just the cans are so recognizable it's such a clear aesthetic that they have and everyone is completely unique and yet all sort of falls into a a, a line that is and it's like shiny and it looks Uh. amazing and it's dope this yeah this one's gonna be great uh the petal prophecy it's a honey IPA. That it is. It's a IPA, as the brewery describes it, New England style IPA brewed with Vermont honey. The honey is fermented out and doesn't provide sweetness, but we balance the drying qualities of honey with the addition of oats, Vienna malt, and a unique malt called honey malt. Who See knew? what they did there? The blend of these specialty malts creates flavors and aromas of fresh 
baked bread hopped with citrus, Simcoe, Amarillo, and Cascade, providing a cavalcade of fresh citrus zest, ripe apricots, and a field of wildflowers. BB Co. does crazy shit. Like, that's that's, a, let's just... Yeah, that that's a dope description. That's a dope Scrabble word. Alvacade. <laughs> Whoa. And I read it without stumbling once. Yeah, good like, for I kinda, you. I, I, I had to read it a few times, to be honest with you, but whatever. <laughs> it's 6% ABV. Beer Advocate has it at 88. Untapped has it at 3.9. And on the SRM chart, I would put it around a seven it's like it's like it's like mead or something it's like honey in a glass yeah pretty much mine looks a little darker but i think that's because like the cameras it's Mm -hmm. it's they look very very similar like up close but uh yeah it's 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 darkened orange juice in a way but it looks like honey in a glass for sure nice head retention uh about a centimeter thick but pillowy it almost in in my glass it's kind of hard to tell on camera but it almost looks like the foam is a bu- is like floating above the beer and not sitting on it, which is kind of mm. cool. So that's yeah, it's creamy, it's dense. It's new. Um, and I mean, hazy is the word. I, I would say it's opaque. You can't yeah. see through it at all. Like it's a, sure. it's a New England through and through, unfiltered. You know, all of that that kind of stuff does seem like there's some sticky lacing in here. It's kind of hard to tell until I drink more of it, but it seems like we have some legs on this one. Oh yeah, and I'm very excited. Right off the nose is is a lot of hops first with the citrusy fruit notes behind it, and then I feel like as you keep smelling it, it kind of switches. It goes from like hop first in aroma and then kind of turns on its head so you get more of the aroma as you get used to it. Um, you know, orange peel, citrus, spice. It's spicy, but it's like vanilla at the same time. <clears throat> Yeah, I would say it's not at, I mean, you know, they even say uh, we, we put the honey in there, but the honey is fermented, so it doesn't provide sweetness. So while you might hear honey IPA and think, oh, I'm going to be getting into something super sweet, that's not what the nose gives off. What the nose gives off is much more the tropical citrus world. Yeah. But uh, that particular blend of hops, obviously the citrus bringing a lot of citrus but the Simcoe and the Amarillo are bringing a lot of earthiness. I mean, Floral. there's florality, mintiness yeah. almost. You know, there is that sort of zesty uh, oh, vegetal yeah. quality almost, but vegetal isn't the right word because that makes it sound bad, but it's... Yeah, it's it's earthy, it's spicy in a way, but yeah, it does have kind of that florality to it, um, grapefruit apricot as they kind of describe it i mean it's it is what it is it smells amazing and and then the cascade is throwing like there's a little bit i mean there's a little hop in the back end there's a bitter yeah there's a bitter quality back there that you're like oh yeah that's that's in there for sure yeah six percent uh you know you you know it's there so i'm excited well then what are we what are we staring at it for i don't know cheers homie cheers Yeah, I feel like the honey flavor is there. It's not that strong. It's not, you know, it's not like, oh, it's so much honey. It's just a mild little bit of honey, mild little bit of mixed with citrus and tropical fruits. Um, I think the hops really balance it out well because it's not, I wouldn't say it's one or the other like citrusy tropical fruity notes as opposed to hoppy and dankness. Um, I think it's balanced pretty well. There is a little bit of creaminess to it, but I think I was expecting more creaminess just based off the description, what it looks like and what it smells like. I think it's a little more watery than that. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I just think, you know, kind of going down, it's just like a little easier and a little quicker going down. Uh, The back end, definitely getting more of that orange lemon peel rather than anything else. But, I mean, the apricot, apricot, however you say it, uh, that flavor is there. The tangerine sort of flavor is kind of there. But uh, you can taste the hops. They're not out of the equation. 
Not at all. I mean, it's definitely an IPA up front. I think what you said about it being sort of watery is a good way of putting it. And I, but I, I don't mean to say it that way. It's just that when you look at it, it looks so creamy. Sticky. It looks like you're almost expecting like lactose or something. And it's yeah. not that. It's it's drier than that. It's smoother than that. I think the balance in here is extremely delicate and subtle. The honey shows up in terms of florality. I mean, we kind of hinted yeah. at that on the nose, but that comes through uh, when you take a sip more than anything. It's like it's more like if you had honey soap or something. Like it's 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 floral. It's mm. like lavender kind of. Uh, it's that kind of flavor. So that yeah, that's there. And then the hops, you know, bring the citrus. But I wouldn't call the citrus tropical. Like I wouldn't say mango or guava or anything like that i would lean more towards pithier fruits orange tangerine grapefruit type thing grapefruit peel yeah. i don't know when i when i read honey india pale ale i just thought "Ooh, that's gonna be sweet and it's not and oh no, yeah and they were right <laughs> they didn't yeah. lie to us i mean that in a in a great way it's super balanced it's it, it's like their description said. It's a field of wild flowers. Uh, the mouthfeel is zingier than I thought it was going to be. Um, it's crisp, and it leaves your mouth kind of clean. Like I don't. It's it's interesting. Like a lot of times with an IPA, you have sort of a a lingering bitterness or lingering citrus or something. And there's a little bit of that, but not much. It's kind of clean. It it is very clean. It's actually a little bit surprising. I was not really expecting that at all. Like I said, based off of the description, the look and the smell, I was thinking, all right, I mean, this is gonna this is gonna be sweet. It's gonna taste kind of like cream like very, very like thick, full. Not really. Mm -hmm. No. It's it's more on medium uh mouthfeel. Carbonation is there, but it's not really noticeable in a way. It's kind of just in the background. Um, I have had this beer before at a bar in Brooklyn with some friends, and at the time, we were drinking a lot, and I wasn't really analyzing it, but I remember, A, getting it in Brooklyn, which I was so happy about, but I remember, like, going to the bartender and saying, I, I didn't know what the name was, it, what it was called at the time, and so I said, yeah, I want the purple can, that thing, and she was like, uh, okay, and... I remember then being just thinking like, oh, drinking craft beer in Brooklyn is awesome now that, you know, things are starting to open up again. And I remember it being very good. And now sitting here kind of analyzing it again, it just kind of puts me back in that night. <laughs> and I'm just really like reminiscing and I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember this beer got me through the night. Oh, yeah. I remember awesome. when I was drunk in Brooklyn? <laughs> yeah. You know, that can go one of two ways. That can either be a happy memory or oh. a real miserable memory. <laughs> I need to charge my phone. I get to call an Uber. Like, yeah, no, it was it was a good memory. We were celebrating uh, someone's birthday. So, but no, it's very good. I really enjoy it. Um, still head retention. I drank half of it. It's still there. Yeah. And some and some decent some decent lacing, too. You can see the, the legs I was talking about. Bibico. This thing's a moving. It's got legs. BB Co., where fermentation meets imagination. That's their slogan, and I think this beer encapsulates that perfectly. It's oh, yeah, for fermented sure. honey meeting this sort of, you know, imaginative quality of a beer. And what they do at, at BB Co., we'll get into some of the beers they have on tap and whatnot, but it's a level of creativity, of, you know, sort of playing. I mean, this is a little bit more towards the. All right, I'll put it this way. If anybody's going to bring that fucking commercial that I hate so much to life, the one, the, the, the Jim Beam Jim one Beam. with the goat's milk and shit, it's BB Co. Because they do have that kind of <laughs> funky, wacky yeah. side of them. Um, yeah, but like they just kind of go for it, which is really great. I mean, they, you know, imagine fermentation meets imagination. Every beer they make is very like different and not, they don't have like, oh yeah, this is our traditional. No, it's always, uh, you know, just, hey, throw in this. Let's just see what happens. And we, don't we love that? Yeah, I mean, it's all about, the, it's about creativity. It's about wanting to have fun. The owner is Joe Lemna, and he's a vet, a beer industry veteran. He comes oh, yeah. to Burling, Burlington Beer Co., or he founded Burlington Beer Co. after a stint at Dogfish Head, at Old Saratoga Brewing. He worked... Uh, 
for a long time at Evolution Brewing Company, and then you know he decided to basically turn his home brewing hobby into Burlington beer using his original home brewing recipes. Yeah, so Joe's cool. kind of like the mastermind behind all of this, and it's really great to see because yeah, he's. I think it says he has over ten years of brewing experience from canning to managing. So I mean, he's seen it and done it all. Yeah, he's he's a a real. It's not. You know, it is one of those stories of like a home brewer turned into they own a brewery, but he comes to it. It's it's not that thing where it's like, we just thought we'd start a brewery, which we see a lot. It, this yeah. was like, no, I've I've been in it. I know what it is. And I think that's reflected in how amazing the business is doing. They opened in 2014 and they are one of I'm, I'm serious. Like I, I've spent a lot of time in Burlington. I know Burlington pretty well. BB Co is one of the best in the game up there, yeah. and it's one that everybody reaches for. This is their tap room behind me. Their current tap room. They Looks are moving. Dope. Uh, so where I'm sitting is kind of like this is kind of if you look out on it from the bar. So if you're on YouTube and you want to take a look, behind me is the the tap room with the tables and stuff with people sitting, and then behind that is where all the barrels are, where they do a lot right. of their fermentation and stuff, and then that away tanks actual brewing stuff like that but what i wanted to point out was like the wall like you see the artwork that we yeah. were talking about on the can that theme continues like in sort of the artwork uh and the murals on the wall which is dope yeah it's really dope and yeah as you said they are uh moving they're hoping that the new tap room they they say they hope it's available in july and we in it now so hopefully we can get there soon is it but open <laughs> I don't know. Basically, he says, uh, Joe says, they're in the process of moving the tap room, restaurant, and barrel conditioning operation from Williston to Burlington's South End. They're not in the heart of Burlington, but they hope to get there. They want to be just, you know, at home, don't we all? Well, that's the funny thing. They're not in Burlington. They're Burlington Beer Co., but they're not in Burlington. Right. Until they open this new space, then they will be in Burlington. Uh, remains right now in their original space, which is Omega Drive location, where it's grown to 25,000 square feet, as you said, since the 2014 start. Uh, they're hoping the new space will occupy 14,000 square feet of the former Vermont Hardware Company space at 180 Flynn Avenue. So if you're in the area and you know Flynn <laughs> Avenue, you know... Google there Maps it, it and get there. But well, another thing that's really cool is they're going to be next door neighbors to Switchback Brewing. And apparently Switchback is like, guys, get over here. They're like pumped for them to come. So, Oh, that's fun. So if you don't like the beers at Burlington Beer Company, you can go to Switchback and vice versa. Or vice versa. I was going to say maybe vice versa. Yeah. Um, the way they describe themselves, we brew with local and international malts, hops, yeast, fruit, vegetables, spices, and herbs while we explore new ways to put our stamp on classic beer styles, we strive to find a balance between going too far and staying rooted in tradition. I would say this beer we're drinking now is leaning towards tradition, and uh, maybe yeah. the next one we're going to drink maybe going too far <laughs> oh, in a good way. Oh, oh I don't think the next one's going to be traditional <laughs> at all, and I am pumped for it, but we'll get there. Yes, we'll get I would there. agree. Uh, this is more traditional. It's a straight up IPA with some great flavor and some balanced flavor. And, you know, we like to use that word a lot, but it's true. I mean, when you have a beer that can give you those notes and can give you the style, but also can make you go, oh, what am I tasting? Boom, right there. That's that's what we want, you know. What we have to talk about. And we don't always talk about this with oh, the breweries we're featuring, oh, but we have to talk about oh, the food. Woo. Listen, so as part of the whole experience in the tap room, this portion of it, the food and tap room portion, is moving to the new Burlington space as well. But so the chef is is Matt Spalding. The baker is Josh Lemo. Lemu. Lemu. It looks French. <laughs> There's an X in there. Um, he is a. a New England Culinary Institute alum, I, would, I believe. I was just about to say, this guy must know what he's doing because... He does. Uh, wow. But the, the beautiful thing... Okay, the food looks amazing. Like, I have to get back up there and get to... I've actually oh. never been to their space. I've, you know, for all the time I've spent in Burlington, I've never been to the space. But I've got to try the food because the what they do is... You see this at breweries sometimes, but the food and the beer complement each other really nicely. And they use yeah. the beer in the food. They use the food in the beer, right? So, for example, they use 
beer to make a special sauce for their double burger. They use uh, they they do beer brine pickles. They do a beer infused cheese fondue and oh. grainy mustard. They have vinegar fermented from beer, and so it'll be like, oh, we're drinking this like we're drinking this double IPA, and we're like eating this pretzel with the same double IPA mustard sauce. You know what I mean? Like it's like a perfect like symbiotic sort of. Stephen, what are you doing tomorrow? Thing. Where are you, yeah, what are you right. doing tomorrow? We're going to we're going we're going going to Vermont apparently. <laughs> yeah, are you kidding me? Exactly. Beer infused cheese, Gabe Apria, sign me up. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's um, I, what I love is that they interviewed uh, Joe about this, and he he even says in the article, it's not highfalutin. There's no limits. It's meant to be fun, and I think that's true of the food. It's true of the beer. It's true of their overall aesthetic. Like, listen, Jim Beam, we're not out here drinking goat's milk but it's meant to be fun that's the point <laughs> and it's certainly you know working for them but the food just looks i mean i think there's I, another commercial where they joke about like putting like a lobster claw on the glass that might be like bud light or something i don't know there's another commercial where there's like a lobster claw and it's like the new you're you're right i remember that uh, i remember that the problem is someone i think someone actually did that um <laughs> Well, we'd like but to take this moment to apologize <laughs> on behalf that. of whoever on did behalf that. Of whoever did that, yeah. Uh, and apparently, uh, Josh Lemo, the the New England Culinary Institute alum, he's got a top notch sourdough bread that's on the menu. They've got you know, fun, let's let's see some of the fun things here. Ah. They have so the bread dough is made with a wild rice brown ale called peasant bread, and then elaborate metaphor, which is one of their beers. Flavors of the brine for the pickles. See, uh, no, who else is doing this, man? That's insane. The burger sauce is made with complicated being a wizard double IPA. It's complicated being a wizard double IPA. That's my bad. I'm sorry. I love that beer name. And then <laughs> we'll get into one more later that particularly pertains to the next beer we're going to drink. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a uh, whole experience. They're doing all the things here, so it's you can get dinner, a beer, and dessert, all for just ah, uh, it's it, it looks incredible. It it really does. If you haven't, go to the website, read some articles, check out the pictures because they will not disappoint at all. Speaking of dessert, oh. I I am ready. To uh, let's offer some final thoughts on this yeah. floral journey that we're on. Yes, and um, then let's go grab a huge slice of chocolate cake. Let's go. Uh, spoiler alert. Let's go grab a dessert. Uh, re- I I like it. I think it was a little bit surprising. Like I said, I was expecting kind of. I you know what? I'll say this. I was expecting like a milkshake IPA, and I didn't get that, and that's okay because that's not what this is. And they were right. You know, we use the honey, but, you know, we don't make it too sweet. We don't make it, you know, dessert-like. I mean, it's just, it's a classic, straight-up dope IPA with a lot of good flavor and balanced malt. And, um, you know, at 6%, it'll make you, it'll make your day better. (laughs) I agree. I think I also was expecting more creaminess, more lactose, for no reason. That's not, that's not in the description. There's nowhere that we found that. It's just it, looking at it, it the just looked look creamier and the, than it and was. The smell, ex- yeah, exactly. But that said, I think that it's the the delicate balance in here is blowing my mind. And you know, if you're someone who likes New England IPAs, you will love this because the honey. You know, I know what the word does in your brain, but put that aside for a second. Really, it's just amping up the florality, the earthiness, which is a given in any good New England IPA. So it complements it really nicely. It's a, a, it definitely makes the beer unique as opposed to other New England IPAs you could have. Mm. And I think they should be commended on their creativity, but not taking it too far. Again, it's sort of in the more traditional world of things. And I think it's, uh, it's exactly what they said. It's a, it's a unique spin on a style that everyone's doing. So it works works for me. Love it. You and ready now, for you ready for beer number two? If I had a drum roll, I would play it. We should get one. Damn it! Here we go. Let's drink some fudge. Gabe, 
you're ready to fall in love right now because I feel like we're about to get in. If I if we had like some some romantic music playing, I would be playing it right now. This is a Valentine's Day beer, is what when this I is. Get that feeling <laughs> oh, sexual. I don't know if this that made it weird, but whatever. Listen. Heart swap double stout with raspberries, chocolate fudge brownie, and milk sugar. Me oh my call a doctor. Look at this bad boy. See? Yeah. See? Yeah, Doesn't this that is, just this make is it necessary? Yeah. Yeah. A little like, it makes it romantic Ooh. in a weird way. Listen, it's 8% ABV. Ooh. It's got a 92 on Beer Advocate. Untapped Ooh. has it at 4.11. Ooh! And it's a double chocolate fudge brownie milk sugar raspberry stout. I mean... I, I mean... Mm. Do I, what do we do? Do we have a moment of silence? Like, do Butter we me offer up. up? Like, I don't know what to do here, but this is and, like, this is like, it's Valentine's Day. You brought home some roses for your loved one. You had a nice dinner, and now you're gonna sip on this before you let the night carry you away wherever <laughs> it may take you. Y'all about to get intimate. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. <laughs> Just absolutely incredible. I remember when we were grabbing BB Co. for a future episode. I remember we saw the honey and we said, okay, classic IPA. And then I I think I remember one of us read the description and then we both were just like, looked at each other like, oh my God, yeah. are, we, are we doing this? Every now and then when we're beer shopping, I'll find a beer and just go, Gabe, Gabe, just call. <laughs> get, get over here. Gabe, just read it. And that, yeah, yes, yes. It's like, yes, grab it, grab eight, four packs of it. We need it all. Now, what's funny um, is this is, oh. Bibico does these, these kind of styles uh, quite a bit. And I actually have a different one in my fridge that I almost drank on this episode, but I wanted to share a moment with Gabe. But I have oh. another one that is a double stout with milk sugar, salted caramel, waffle Ooh. cone, and vanilla. Oh, oh. Oh, so, you had me at waffle cone. Why didn't right, you drink that? <laughs> right. So they do this a lot, but that's also an eight percent double stout, and it's you know very similar. So I don't think I've ever had a double stout before. Definitely not on the show, but I don't think me personally have ever had to. Di- I don't like. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, we. I know we haven't had one on on the show, and it's basically. I, I mean, well, it's basically what double stout means is double. It's like an a imperial stout, stout on steroids. It's yeah, an imperial no, stout. It. it means it's like what you would say double IPA. It just means the ABV is higher, right? So, right. yeah. So we have technically have one on the show, but we haven't called them a double stout. But whatever. The brewery is what I love is that Joe Lemma Lemna, the uh, the founder, he said in an interview that originally the company was dinged for pastry stouts quote not being sweet enough, and his response to that was, "If they want it sweet, then we'll make it fucking sweet." And so they're unbalanced on purpose, but they're still good. That's, that's what his, That's what he said. That's that's incredible. And then this other quote, I think it's by him, the uh, with the brownie. The oh, brownie yeah. is a beer in brownie form, and the beer is a brownie in beer form. That goes back to what I was talking about with the food, though. They have a brownie on the menu that is made with. So the the brownie itself is made with this beer and this beer has some of the brownie in it somehow. So it's again, that perfect kind of, uh, complement to each other. It's like the, I think the brownie has freeze dried raspberries, single origin chocolate and a good dose of this beer. And then, you know, the beer has, yeah, almost 400 pounds of raspberry puree and 350 pounds of brownies. So exclamation point. Exactly. Are you (laughs) kidding me? Are you kidding me? No. That is no, something I'm not. else. And I am very excited. Let's not waste any time. Okay. SRM. Jet Black. Black 40. 40. Done. Great. <laughs> Moving on. Head lacing. It was uh, tan head about a centimeter thick. Uh, went away very, very quickly. Reddish hue to it. It looks it's it's it looks more like like a Coca Cola head than like a Guinness. If that helps yes. you, it's it's tan. I would agree with that. It's gone now. Uh, yeah, plenty of lacing in the glass. Looks like you know, looks looks creamy. Looks rich. It Happy smells, Valentine's Day. It smells like love. Like you know when you fall in love and you're just on cloud nine. That's what it smells like. <laughs> 
No. But like chocolate form. No, I don't, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> Just you kidding. You will. Um, <laughs> yeah, the raspberries come through for sure. Roasted malt is there. It is definitely leaning to, I mean, the raspberry is present and upfront, whereas the last one was like honey, but like the honey is hiding and it's more Hide subtle it, yeah. and delicate. No, this is like, this is a this is raspberry. This is chocolate. This is Espresso. caramel. Yeah, I mean, more stout than like. I wouldn't say coffee. More roasted malt stout, normal stout, which I guess coffee and chocolate it kind of automatically goes to that. But I would the, say espresso. It's it smells like strong. I mean, for eight yeah, percent, you know, I would I imagine. Think- the alcohol is there, and I think that the milk sugar comes through for sure. The like lactose, there's like a there's a creaminess and a sweetness to this outside of the raspberry, which is obvious, but it's almost like caramel or something, or almost like putting your nose into like brownie batter. Like there is a sweet sort of sugary thing, which is delicious. It smells like a candlelit Valentine's Day dinner. That's what it smells like. In July. When the lava cake comes out. Oh, with like a raspberry fudge on top of it. Oh my God, yes. That's a perfect way to describe it. I wonder if it tastes the same. I guess we'll have to drink it to find <laughs> I've out. I've never seen you so excited to drink a beer. All right. Oh my God. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, lava cake, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. That um, definitely is unbalanced. In a delicious way, uh, wow, that's a lot of raspberry puree right up front, chocolate-covered raspberry truffle. I'm getting more chocolate sauce than, like, brownie, but it's definitely, definitely there. The uh, The raspberry is very prominent. I, I would say just based off of our history and the way we approach stouts like this, I feel like automatically I'm getting a little bit of cherry. Not that it's in here, but just because of the type of flavors it is. But I mean, it's, it's rich, dark red fruitiness. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And the roasted malts do come back on the back end. I mean, there is, you know, as, as is often the case up front, sweet behind that bitter. And so the bitter thing is there. There's definitely some coffee, some roasted malts. Um, this feels like a seesaw to me. Hear me out. Um, it is unbalanced, but it's sort of like, Mm -hmm. it's not one note. It is, uh, two different ends of the spectrum. So you drink it and you're like, that's sweet. Whoa, that's bitter. Oh, it's sweet again. Oh, it's it's sort of like a, a, a crazy explosion of flavor. And in the mouth, it's it's full bodied. Yeah. Decent zing of carbonation more than I was expecting. But it's Same. it's creamy. It's luscious. It's rich. It's velvety. It is. I mean, I need that she jazz thick. music. Back. <laughs> she thick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> shit is so good it's like when you were saying like the seesaw it's like you know how when you watch tennis mm-hmm. you're just doing just this I, I i get that um i feel like i'm getting on the on the seesaw level i feel like i'm getting more of the flavor rather than the bitterness but the bitterness is there it's definitely there and it's definitely on the back end for it's the back me of, for the most yeah it's the back of the palate it's the roof yeah. of the back of your mouth and the very back of your tongue once you get past the raspberry and all the other sweet things which are in there, which uh, it's not one note, but it is it is red fruit heavy. I think strawberry, raspberry, cherry, whatever you want to call it, it is heavy on that. But there's elements of vanilla, some caramel, some of uh, chocolate and whatnot. But and behind it though, that back of your tongue, top of your palate, that is where the roasted malt, the sort of coffee espresso things, the stout elements that come from the yeah. malt, that's where it comes in. Well, Gabe's not sober anymore. She thick. That should be the title of this episode. Round 81, she thick. She thick. <laughs> what? What are they drinking? I love it. Um, well, uh, Gabe, I mean, this is, I feel like this is going to be the easiest one you've ever done, but... Here we go. Time to go to work. Can Art and Crafts. 
Can Arts and Crafts this round has a little bit of background to it rather than just my thoughts, and I'm very excited to share those. The inspired artwork on the cans, which they loosely call line art, dates back to one of Joe's, the owners, one of his high school friends. As Joe began to brew beer for Burlington Beer Company and needed images for his cans, he reflected on how much he enjoyed that style and had fellow friend Tim Feely, now his creative director, riff on that original idea to come up with come up with what you see today. Every can was intended to pique people's curiosity and beg them to interact with the cans by taking an up-close look to identify the type of beer and the design. Tim, Joe, you hit that on the head, my guys. My, What's good, my guy? I love that expression. You guys hit that on the head because that is absolutely correct. I mean, going in order as we normally do, Petal Prophecy, I mean, it looks... Every can artwork has this very kind of specific design with like lines and they're all shiny lines and you know we've got what looks like a honeycomb and a honeybee on top honey ipa perfect um based off of the colors we're looking at a white background with purple and gold lines uh on the can and then the other can the heart swap is very similar with a little bit of red thrown in for the raspberry i mean we're looking at silver and black with you know hearts galore it kind of looks like from Alice in Wonderland, the Queen of Hearts, and like all of her soldiers, you know, it, it kind of looks like uh, if you saw the movie with Helen and Bottom Carter playing the Queen, like her garden, you know, everything kind of has this theme to it with the hearts and the, the petals and the flowers and the army. Like we've got the black background with the gold, the purple, and the red. And uh, Stephen, you'll appreciate this heading back to LA soon. These cans right here look like the home and away jerseys of the Los Angeles Lakers. Tell me I'm crazy. Tell me I'm wrong. No, you're right. You're That's Bam. sheer coincidence. They don't all look like that, but ours they do. They don't all look like that, but these definitely do. I mean, we've got the, the white home jerseys and then the black alternates, the black Mamba jerseys. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Um, I think this artwork is absolutely incredible based off of the images the lines the the types of beer and yeah they are right i mean this will make you get close to it and say what is this what am i drinking it pulls you in we've got an easy easy 11 out of 10 no question this is dope can art these are cans that definitely are making the wall up in new york city the apartment where we're putting it on the wall we're making sure we get it there Bob Ross is here. Bob Ross agrees. Thank you for another amazing edition of Can Arts and Crafts. Ordinarily, we like to read off some beers that caught our eye off the list, but I'm looking at the cans they have at the brewery right now, and to be honest, every single one of them is like mind blowing. So I'll just I'll just read out some, but. This is a little bit of a beer orgasm right here, but um, ah. if if you're if you're sad and mourning about that coarse seltzer, the orange creamsicle flavor not being available anymore, you could head over to BB Co and get yourself an orange creamsicle smoothie style goza with tangerines, mandarin oranges, milk, sugar, and vanilla. That is exciting, and Gabe likes tigers, so uh, there you go. And you don't got to tell me twice. Another one I want to point out. I mean, they have. Guys, they have a porters and stouts section, which is just like every Bruh. single one. Thank makes you. I was, me want to cry. Because if you weren't going to mention it, I was going to mention. I was waiting for one of us to. But, they have a uh, a cultivate uh, twenty twenty, which is an English style barley wine brewed with blueberries. I'm blue. And they have, uh, and that's aged in Pinot Noir barrels. They also have. Uh, let's see. They got a bourbon barrel aged imperial cranberry stout. They got an imperial stout with apple candy syrup and spices aged in apple brandy barrels. I'm going to have to, I have to walk off the show. I'm going to start crying. I, <laughs> this Barley is incredible. Wine ale brewed with raspberries, blueberries, and cherries aged in bourbon and red wine barrels. Head, head or grow 2021. I mean, it, the, it, it, it's just endless. The the creativity and the imagery here. I mean, Joe is really doing it well. Um, every beer is so different and so unique. And then there's just one, not even the beer, just the name of the beer. You said it earlier. It's called It's Complicated Being a Wizard. Yeah. And I just think like if Gandalf had to drink something. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
Also, <laughs> mahogany and that. tweed, 2021, 12%. Maple barley wine ale aged in cognac barrels. I mean, come on. That's... And Steven? it's only $186 for a case of it. Steven? Yeah. When are we going to BB Co? I because told you we got to go back to Burlington. I, I just... <laughs> it's I, ridiculous. How can you not go visit this brewery with these beers... A lot of what we're reading is from the cans to go menu, but we'll yeah. take it and we'll take it to go anywhere. But they have plenty care. of stuff on draft as well. They got that dope food menu. I don't know that we need to rank the beers. I think we're kind of on the same page there, but um, the brewery is just, <laughs> <laughs> we could do a whole other episode on BB Co and have a whole different experience and they'd be worth it. So guys, guys, you got stuff new? Send it to us. We will. We'll, we'll feature put it you. On full blast. We'll feature send you, us an, Co. Send us another thick, thick did, whatever you know. We did it this for Ale Smith. All right. Uh, we have one last thing to do before we get out of here and nuzzle up with this beautiful beer that's in front of us. Last call. Don't cry, Gabe. It's okay. We're going to no, get through I'm it upset. together. I no, know you we're are. we're not going to get through it. I'm upset. As Drake would say, I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Well, I didn't know there were dominoes in Japan. I'll just start there. Neither and- did I. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's new. I, I was so interested when I started reading the article, and then I kept reading and got real upset, but... Well, I'll, I'll let you take it and talk about oh, why you're unhappy because right. <laughs> I feel like I might have to be devil's I might, advocate here. I might have to be devil's advocate on this one, but go let's ahead. Ta- let's, let's do it. Let's talk about it. There are certain things that shouldn't go on pizza. Domino's in Japan. We're talking to you. Are we talking about and pineapple, Gabe? Debatable. <laughs> debatable i i don't it wouldn't be my first choice but it wouldn't be my last choice but that's a whole other conversation no i don't mean pineapple i mean i can't i can almost not even say (laughs) it can't even say it fish and chips yeah and lemon wedges on a tomato sauce pizza okay no it's not tomato sauce though that's why this is why i is there is tomato sauce on this pizza. It's okay. on this pizza, and it's horrifying. So, the Euro Cup just ended. Shout out to Italy. I don't know why I did basketball motion. They weren't playing basketball. <laughs> Shout out to Italy. They beat England in the final. Very excited. Yazuri. Love it. So, Japan said, let's take something that kind of represents both of them. So, they put fish and chips, England, on a pizza, Italy. And everyone, including me, is real upset about it. And someone even wrote, Japan Domino's has invented a dish that insults both England and Italy. And I agree. My God. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's, it's, it, it sounds gross, but if you look at the picture of the pizza, maybe it's just a shout out to their culinary artist, whoever takes these pictures. It doesn't look bad. Now, the lemons... Um- are we looking at the same photo? <laughs> yes, the lemons, the lemons, I would say, probably should lose that lemon rind. I don't know how you're going to eat through that, but it's cooked, so who knows? But listen, it's it's got a tartar sauce base. I don't see tomatoes. I don't know where you're coming up with tomatoes. I don't see it, but... The listed ingredients include crispy fish and chips, lemon, potato slices and basil with a tartar sauce and tomato sauce base. Okay, that so it's mixed. Okay, okay, from okay. From the article. So that it's a mix sounds- of... Horrifying. It's a mix of tomato sauce and tartar sauce. But here's the thing. Like, if you read some of the reviews, first of all, Domino's in Japan had to apologize for this because it got <laughs> set up such a social media backlash. They had to tweet, we are sorry our fish and chip pizza has caused so much trouble. <laughs> we think it's quite delicious. If you're in Japan and would like to challenge, let us know. We may be able to work out a plan internally that we can offer to you for free. A lot of people are really raving about it. I mean, it's like some of the 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 thing. Now, granted, the internet 
is not a great barometer of this. The internet is the reason there's a tomato beer. But <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> one fan quoted Japanese on the frontier of culinary excellence yet again. Another one, honestly, with some sriracha or chili flakes, I bet it bags. No! <laughs> well, one what, person, you, what drugs are you taking? One person wrote, honestly, I had the same initial reaction, but I have heard nothing but good things about this pizza. And the picture of it, I'm just saying the picture doesn't look gross. Does it look like a pizza the way I envision pizza? No. But if you think of it, think of it like a fried dough. Does that help? Think of no. it like... <laughs> no, it does not. It does not help <laughs> all. At I'm all. seeing is fish and chips with melted mozzarella. I love melted mozzarella. I'm seeing dough. The mozzarella looks like it's melted perfectly. The lemon wedges are a little weird. I'll give you that. But... I don't know how tough they are. If I ate, I like lemon. So it's weird that the rind is still on it. Steven, (laughs) Steven, Steven, you want lemon wedges on pizza? We're talking about the Japanese. They invented eating raw fish. And I bet someone said that was gross at some point too. But we do it. I don't know. Although there was uh, one uh, person who tweeted that did make me laugh. I was about to say that I'd try it until I saw the whole ass lemon wedges. Nah, <laughs> sis, you got to drizzle it, not bake it into the whole pie. <laughs> that's that's fair. If I had a gripe, it would be I, it would I, be the lemon wedges. I I'm just saying take the rind off it. That's all I'm asking for. You you could slice it up and I would eat it, but they the rind is still on it. How do you Listen. mess this up? We want to know your thoughts, people. Google this image. You got to find it. I mean, we can't show it to you on this podcast. Uh, I on this bet podcast. it bangs. What <laughs> drugs are you smoking, whoever wrote that? That is unreal. Listen. But it, I think it does insult both Italy and England. <laughs> um, more Italy, um, but Italy okay. won. Here, here, so here. I'm Let me put it this way. Fine with it. If you put a McRib in front of me and this pizza, I would happily take a bite of this pizza. Over the McRib. No. Nope. Do not you me. know what's in a McRib? <laughs> I don't want it. It's you don't those are the questions you don't ask though. You don't ask those <laughs> questions. You just say it's a McRib. You, it it's got a lot of popularity. I would much rather have a quality less barbecue sandwich than whatever this is. <laughs> I get it. It's because it's it's insulting to your culture and you feel hurt by it. But it's like, at honestly, some point, I'm honestly past that at this point. It just I, I don't want fish and chips with tartar sauce and tomato. Like, think about that mixture in your mouth. I know. Mouth. Like, but at some point, somebody put mashed potatoes on a pizza and the Irish had to deal with it. And I think you need to get over this. <laughs> And just I think you need to reckon with it and try it. Listen, we've Lemon drank wedges. We drank tomatoes. This can't yeah, be worse than that. it didn't have tartar sauce in it. I can guarantee you if that beer had a tartar sauce in it, I'd probably be like, you know what? You're going to film this alone. <laughs> that's that's I'll so take funny. A sip. I might be like, yeah, I'll take a sip of it. There's potatoes on it. I don't even see the potatoes, to be honest with you. There are. Well, there's chips, so they're pr- probably french fries. It looks like something that you would get at like fat wedge and i think that's something that only connecticut people will understand but it's a place that does like grinders with like it's literally like chicken fingers and mozzarella sticks and onion rings on a sandwich and that's the sandwich it's yeah it's a it's a what what do they call it it's like a place to go when you have like the munchies because it's like no one like you can only be stoned when you eat it because there's no other reason why you would get that right but that's what i think of when i look at this pizza and I'm not look, I'm not trying to say it's my first choice. I'm not. I'm just trying to say <laughs> I think that it might have merit and the internet uh, from people who've tried it seems to agree with me and I would follow the Japanese into strange culinary places. So maybe it's good. I'll say okay, you'll enjoy this. I'll say this. And I mean this wholeheartedly. Okay. If Chef Morimoto Made there it. we go. See? I would take a bite. See? Yes, because I trust him. But, but Domino's you, you don't in trust Japan? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Crispy fish and chips, lemon, potato slices and basil with a tartar sauce and tomato sauce. Ba- you lost me, girl. 
Let us know what you think at the HL Podcast, Instagram, Twitter. You can send us an email. Uh, tell us tell us if you side with Gabe or me on this one. Uh, would you I'm try upset. it? Would you try it? Or are you vehemently opposed? And we'll see who wins this bet. Until Thanks for joining then. us, guys. Drink good beer. Love each other. Stay safe. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.